We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. And we're back with Liberty Nation's executive editor, Lisa K. Donner, here on Liberty Nation Radio, heard coast to coast on the Radio America Network. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. Earlier in the show, Lisa and I were talking about J.D. Vance and what he brought to the table for the Donald Trump ticket. And we, we started talking about, Lisa, the, the, the various demographics for which Joe Biden is currently having some issues, let's say. And you mentioned uh, younger voters, black voters, Hispanic voters. And it's, it's the young voters that I really want to focus in on here because obviously young voters are of all races. So it's probably a, 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 a better sample size to dive into. And why do you think Joe Biden is having issues with this younger demographic? Well, let me just say, first of all, J.D. Vance is 39 years old. Mm. And that's an extraordinarily young age for... The, the, the first millennial uh, VP candidate, right? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I hadn't looked into it because, you know, he was just nominated last night. But but bottom line, he's he's a young guy and he brings a lot of fresh new perspectives. And the problem is, you know, Joe Biden isn't just old. He's struggling with his health. And so I think when you have both of those things, there's a disconnect between the young, vibrant, I'm going to live forever mm. youngsters. I call them full head of hair craniums um, and, <laughs> and the older folks. And, you know, Donald Trump may not be that far in age from uh, Biden, but he certainly is in presence and stature and in the way he conducts himself. So I think that's the primary problem. I mean, Biden's not speaking millennial. He's not speaking Zoomer. And I think J.D. Vance can speak that with his eyes closed and one hand tied behind his back. It's interesting you say that because obviously uh, so many people nowadays get their information via the internet and specifically via social media. Uh, and places like TikTok and X, that's where the younger generations go quite off, quite off right. to TikTok. And Donald Trump seems to be, his campaign, sorry, seems to be doing incredibly well on the TikTok front, because I think they've understood that there is a different language there. The Trump campaign seems very smart to me in, in terms of its tailoring, its different content to the different yeah. groups. And I think you're right that uh, Mr. Vance will, Senator Vance, can make that kind of connection pretty easy himself, whether he he he, he decides to indulge in the TikTok uh, arama it is a different question. Well, wasn't it a couple of weeks ago that we were talking, I believe, on this program about the fact that Trump joined TikTok and immediately, like within 48 hours, he got 5 million, I don't know, yes. subscribers yeah. or what are they called on TikTok? I, th but, I think they're called followers. Followers. There, there are, followers I'm, I'm, I'm exposing my age there. I think yeah. they're called followers. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you talk about exposing the my, age. My spacers. <laughs> Uh, for um, those but, who remember. But Biden joined TikTok and he only was in the hundred thousand. So people were ready and willing to follow Trump, even though he's almost as old as Trump, mm. uh, excuse me, as Biden. But he, like I said, he presents an entirely different persona, just as Vance will present an entirely different persona from Kamala Harris. Well, let's talk about that. That to me is fascinating specifically i am so looking forward to the what i believe and we've discussed this uh, off camera before lisa but i believe it's going to become the most watched vice presidential debate in history because you'll have kamala harris who is not known for her eloquence quite the opposite in fact and you have jd vance who i mean let's be fair he's a super smart guy uh, and he speaks yeah. really well, whether you like what he says or, or not, he speaks really well and he can argue well. Um, and the two of these are going to go head to head on a debate stage. I can't wait. I, I'm, I'm actually thinking about breaking my lifelong ban on popcorn for this. Well, I, you know, I'm not going to beg to differ. I think it will be probably the most widely watched, but not because of the participants, but because of the availability on sure streaming and you know all the multiple ways people can connect in instead of just sitting in front of their tube but there were some pretty exciting ones that i lived through 
Uh, Sarah, Sarah Palin was an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Geraldine Ferraro was a very interesting one. Um, there have been some uh, amazing lines that have come out of uh, vice presidential debates. Uh, Lloyd Benson, I knew Jack Kennedy and you're no Jack Kennedy, you know, uh, things like that. So um, I think the vice presidential debates have been talked down a little bit, even though there have been some really fascinating moments over the mm. years. But this there proved to be the largest view viewed one. I agree with you there, mostly because of the availability. Well, I, I think there's also the international interest. Oh. I, I think that's a, a key factor in it because uh, up until the last seven or eight years, foreign politics, for example, for people in England, well, it was something that happened. And, you know, they've got their, their, their superstar Barack Obama president, uh, or, or they had before that, they had your, your George W. Bush with his nuclear issues and nuclear, nuclear, nuclear issues. It right. I, I can't even say it wrong on purpose. <laughs> um, he talks about nuclear in Iraq. Yeah. And, Iran. and so you had these, but they're, they're, they were far off figures. But now, Texas perhaps thing. as a result of this intentional push for globalism, politics overseas becomes politics at home. And it's discussed just as much. The, the politics of the United States are discussed just as much over the kitchen table at morning breakfast time as British politics are oh, in, in a British home uh, because it, it just dominates. So it's just so strange. I get phone calls from people to say, just to, to talk to me randomly about American politics. And there's people who I wouldn't think were even interested really in dialed British politics. Into it. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's uh, interesting. I wouldn't know that. So, mm. uh, you know, Americans are traditionally very American focused or self focused. I think you can tell a lot more about our system of government than we could accurately talk about with yours. Well, ours I mean, is you know, a lot it's more a parliamentary uh, system com com and all so that. But I don't think the rank and file American can talk you through how exactly you vote for a prime minister, or, you know, that kind of thing. So, it's interesting that they're so fascinated, but it, this happens to be a particularly fascinating time in American politics. It does. Now, how do you think J.D. Vance is going to campaign between now and the election? Will he be focusing on the Midwestern or, or as, as far as the East Coast as you can get without getting to West? Do you think he'll be focusing on those areas or do you think he'll be all over the country like Donald Trump? You know, I think first of all, there's a honeymoon period, but he's got to he's got to get on his feet pretty quickly. And I think, you know, he sells pretty much everywhere. You know, he sells in the Midwest. He'll sell very well among the East Coast elites going to Yale. Um, you know, I think he'll. I don't know he'll, how he'll do out west. I'm not sure about that. Why? Well, um, I, th I think that that sorry, that's a really fascinating point, Lisa. How will he do out west? Because the, the, the alternative question, the flip side of that is, how will Kamala Harris do anywhere outside of Chicago? Uh, outside of Chicago, sorry. Although Chicago probably pretty well. Uh, outside of California. California. And okay. I, I, I think that it's going to come down to a contrast between somebody who uh, can appeal, as you say, to a, a large audience and then somebody who most of the country sees as a West Coast right. elite. Right. Well, we, we talk politics for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but we have to remember Americans don't vote for vice president. Sure. It just, it just really doesn't, when it comes down to it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference who the uh, vice president is. Only in a couple of circumstances can I think did it really, it probably put JFK over the top. Picking LBJ, um, Texas, but people don't vote for vice president. So, you know, he's got to learn how to play second fiddle pretty well to Donald Trump's first fiddle. And we know that Donald Trump knows how to play first fiddle really, really well. The, the orchestra is waiting. Lisa K. Donna, thanks ever so much for joining us. Thank you, sir. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.